This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Dave Andrade here from the Post Color Blog. Today I'm here for the Creative Dojo.net, and I'm going to teach you how you can composite some great looking lens flares over your footage. We're going to use, uh, in this case, we're going to use Premiere Pro, but you can actually use any nonlinear editor. What we need to do is actually download a 3D compositing program and modeling program uh, in a blend file that you open with it. And I'll show you what I mean. So first thing we want to do is actually, if, unless you already have this installed on your system, you want to go to this website here. It's uh, blender.org. And uh, like I said, this is a pretty extensive program. There's a lot to it. You can model, you can, it's a video editor within itself, but we're just going to use it for a particular file and for the tracking options that it has. So go ahead and navigate here and download this. It's a, it's a pretty light program. It doesn't take up much resources on your computer. And then we're gonna hop over to BlendSwap and we're actually gonna download these lens flares here. Uh, it's a CC license zero, as you can see, uh, Creative Commons zero. So you can actually use these without attributing the actual creator. Uh, obviously you could if you wanted to, but you're not obligated to. You do have to sign up for the site. And they're pretty good about not spamming you. If you need to, you can always use a separate email address, but it's pretty straightforward. You just go ahead and sign up, download the particular blend file, and what you'll have to do is hop over into Blender and open it there. And I'll show you what you can do there to get everything prepped so that we can bring it over into our editor. Again, in this case, it's gonna be Premiere Pro, and I'll show you how to composite those two together so you can have fantastic looking lens flares on your footage. So let's hop on over. So here we are in Blender. This is the splash screen that comes up. I'm going to go ahead and open the file right here. I'm going to right click and you wanna make sure the control is uh, selected over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna right click. So now I'm going to left click to set it there and uh, we'll check out a couple of them. We're gonna come up here there's Gemini, same thing, right click. There's Sphinx. And then you have something like Wormhole. So now what we're going to do is basically choose one that we want. Let's go ahead and choose one that we're gonna composite over our footage. Uh, I haven't shown you the footage yet, but let me go ahead and choose one and I'll show you where we're going with this. And what I'm going to do is choose other world in this example. So we're gonna right click here. And you'll see what this uh, this includes. And let's I'll go over here from default over to motion tracking. I'm gonna come down here to open, navigate to my desktop, and here we go, we have the clip loaded. Uh, if we use the middle mouse scroll button, we can zoom in and out. So I'm gonna start it right here. And that's, you can see down here, that's frame five. So I'm gonna use five. And we're going to track these tail lights here. So let's go ahead and scroll this over, see where it ends. And right about there. So let's leave it at 105. So I'm gonna put the end at 105. And now we're gonna set up our tracking marker. So let me go ahead and bring this right back to, uh, to the five there. I'm gonna go up here to add marker, click where I want it. I'm gonna do S for scale. And then right click and hold. And I'm gonna drag it around just to kind of get it centered a little bit. Left click to place it. And we're gonna scroll down here. And as you can see, the pattern size is 21, the search area is 71. If you're familiar with the tracking tools within Premiere Pro or even some other programs, basically you have the area that you're looking for and the search size would be when the footage moves, it's the area that it's looking for the same exact feature. So let's go ahead and track forward. Now, when you have something like this where it turns pink like that, what you can do is right click. Move it to where it should be and then left click to place it. 
and let's go ahead and track forward again. And let's review the footage here. It seems like it's sticking to that tail light pretty good. And I'm actually looking in both places. I'm making sure it looks good here, but I'm also looking at here to make sure it pretty much stays in the center of that light. which it does. So we have our track all set for that. I'm going to come to reconstruction and link empty to track. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other light. I'm going to hit add. Click right there. S for scale. Right click and move. Let's go ahead and track that forward. Now I'm going to track it backwards because I was in the middle of a frame there. Let's see how this goes. Okay, same thing. Looks very good. So up here, you can see it's other world. Now this doesn't guarantee that it's the same as the other screen. So you definitely want to check this. If it's listed as something else, it's going to put the tracker into another file, another scene. And then what you'll have to do is bring it over. And I'll show you how to do that. But anyway, let's go ahead and go from motion tracking over to back to default. Now, in this case, we did want other worlds. So you can see over here, we have our tracking feature. If for whatever reason, we wanted to move it to a different one, we're going to come up here to current scene, change it to all scenes. And you can see this is all our options for our lens flares. So we'll, all we'll have to do is left click here on the track, bring it up here, and choose which one we want to drop it on. As you can see, the little pop-up message there says drop object to scene. Now I do want to get this shot ready for what we need it for. I don't know if I want as many impressions on the screen where you can actually see, let me go ahead and click the control here, where you can see as if it was a dirty uh, lens filming it. So what we can do is come up to the lens grit distorted. Now over here we have the toggle visibility on. But you can see what happens when we do that. What we actually want to do in this case, now if we drill down, you can see it's actually a texture here. So let's go ahead and go into that down here with that selected. And if we uncheck that, it disappears. We'll go back to control. And you see that we still have all the same capabilities that we had before. The other thing I want to do is actually scale this down a little bit. If you remember the scene, those lights were pretty small. So what I actually want to do is go ahead and select the control, S for scale again, and we're going to scale this down. Because what you have to do is remember, this is the size of your whole scene. So if this light is as big as it is within the scene, that's going to overpower everything. So actually what I might want to do is hit S for scale, bring it down just a little bit more. All right, and I think that should be sufficient. Now, if you select the track here and we go down to the timeline, we can see that moves as it should. Just as it was in the footage, it's tracking right along and it's moving towards the bottom left there. But as you can see, the lens flare isn't doing anything. So let's go ahead and go up to the control. We're going to parent that to the track. All we have to do is left click here. Bring it down to the track. And now we've set the track as the parent. So now if we come down here, it moves right along. But that still hasn't solved our issue. As you can see, it's moving now, but it's not even close to where it should be. It should be down here. So what we have to do is we're going to uncheck only render. I'm going to hit the middle mouse scroll wheel. 
hold it down, move this around here. And there's our tracking feature right there. So what I want to do is bring the cursor over there. What you have to do once it's selected, and it may be hard to see, but it, it's uh, the orange feature right there. So I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to type in snap. And what we're going to do is snap the cursor to the selected. So now it's going to take that feature right there, the red and white circle. And it, as you can see, it, it moved right to our track. Obviously, that didn't really affect our lens flare, but we'll, all we have to do in that case is we'll select the control. And you can see how it hopped over there. I'm going to hit spacebar again. I'm going to hit snap. And now we're going to snap selection to cursor because now we have the cursor over on our track. So now that we have the control selected, we're going to move that over to the cursor. And now it's where it should be. So I'm going to click back on only render, zero on my keyboard to get the camera view. Let's come down to the timeline. And now you can see the lens flare is moving exactly as it should. So at this point, everything is pretty much prepped to go. What we're going to do is render this out and then we'll be able to move this over to composite over our footage. But don't forget, we actually have a second feature too. And I'll show you how we can go ahead and take care of that. But for right now, we'll go ahead and render this particular one out. So I'm gonna come here to the render settings. Our footage is actually 1920 by 1080. It was shot at 24 frames a second, so that's fine. Start frame is five, end frame is 105, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna come down here, select this, uh, save it to our desktop. And what it will be saved as, it's under the name of whatever the frames are. So we'll go ahead and click accept right there. I'm gonna come down to PNG, because I don't necessarily wanna have it as a PNG sequence. That's great for if you wanted to do motion tracking where it's frame by frame. But in this case, we'll just re basically render out a movie file. So H.264, the encoding menu appears. I'm gonna change it from AVI to QuickTime. Uh, the rate there is at 9,000. That should be more than sufficient for what we need it for. Now, if we come back up here, you do have the render settings, but we're not going to use those. Animation is the one that we would want to choose, but we're actually going to use these down here. This is the OpenGL settings. So let me go ahead and render this out. Okay, in order to get out of the screen, I'm going to hit the escape key. Now we're back in our view. One thing I did forget to mention before, if you can't see all the options here, or let's say you wanted to drag the track to something that was off the screen, you can come over here to view, toggle maximize area, and you, now you can see everything and quickly and easily be able to relocate it to a different scene. And just to get back, same thing. Uh, you can actually use control up arrow to do the same, but we'll go ahead and go to toggle maximize area, and we're back. Now before we grab the other track marker, I'm gonna take this control, move it up to render layers, and that will clear the parent. And now let's go ahead and go back into motion tracking. We had that one selected. Let's go back to this one. Make sure that's selected by right clicking on it. Reconstruction, link empty to track. Come back up here from motion tracking to default. And now we have track 001. And we're basically gonna follow the same steps. We're gonna click on the control. I'm going to come down here to track one to set parent. Now, as you can see, they're moving together, but they're actually not linked. Click on only render. Middle mouse scroll wheel. We'll move it down here. So right now we have the control selected. So let's go ahead and tra hit track. You can see that one's selected. Space bar. We're gonna snap the cursor to selected. You can see that it slid over there. Now I'm gonna hit control, spacebar, snap that selection over to the cursor, and you can see the lens flare moved right over. I'm gonna click on only render, 
zero on my keyboard to bring it back. And now we have an animation for the other light. Let's come over here, double check our settings. What I'll do is click here to where we're saving it. Again, it's gonna have the same title, but what I'll do just to differentiate and not overwrite what we already have, I'm gonna click on this. You can see it puts a one there. I'm gonna click accept, come down here, and we'll render this one out. So it's completed now, and that's basically all we needed Blender for. But again, we opened up the blend file in this program. We did what we needed to do as far as adjustments. We went ahead and we tracked the footage, and now we're ready to go. We're gonna hop over into our editor and take care of the rest over there. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. They have over 20 highly customizable and professional design templates. With their click and drag interface, adding content is a breeze. And starting at just $8 a month, you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You can start your free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com slash dojo. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure that you use the promo code dojo to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. All right, and here we are, we're in Adobe Premiere Pro, and now we're gonna to start to import the footage and composite the footage that we created on top of what we already had. And just for reference, the reason that we're doing this is so we can make the adjustments with the program that we're familiar with. Obviously, we could have continued to stay within Blender and we could have adjusted color and, and things along those lines, but I just wanted to use it for what we needed it for. And now that we're back in this program, if we wanted to adjust the color of the flare, or if we wanted to adjust certain parameters, now we can do it here. So let's come down here to import. And we're gonna locate the files and go ahead and import them. So the files have been imported. And as you can see, the second set right there has the one ahead of it. I'm gonna left click to unselect those. Left click on this and drag it over. So we'll create a new timeline. Now remember, we started at five, at frame five. So what I'll do is change this from time. I'll right click right here and change it to frames. And let's go ahead and change this to five. And that's the start of what we need. I'm gonna click this and drag it over. And I'm gonna slide over to frame 105. And I'll go ahead and drag the end so that we have exactly what we need. Now let me go ahead and take this footage. We'll take this and drop this right on top. Okay, and now that we have the footage on there, obviously this is all we're going to see. It's at the top of the stack and it didn't have any transparency to it. So what we have to do now in order to composite it on top of what we already have is we left click here. We'll come over to opacity and we'll change this from normal over to linear dodge add. And you can see it's right on top of the light. So let me go ahead and actually mute the audio here. And now you can see how it tracks on the light. Now let's go ahead and add the other footage on top of it. So you can see now how we composited them right on top. I'm gonna slide this over, make sure they track pretty good. Now this may be a little bit of an overkill, especially for this situation. If you were going for maybe a J.J. Uh, Abrams kind of style, or if you wanted to go over the top, if you had maybe like a uh, laser on top of your gun, or if you wanted to be like an alien spaceship or something like that, these may work. However, in this case, this may be a little too much. So what I'm going to do is actually take these two files here. I hold down shift and I select, and now I have both of them. I'm gonna right click, come into nest. We'll just call it nested sequence in this case. You can obviously call it whatever you want. You could actually name it flares if you, if you wanted the reference. So now again, this is all we see. We're gonna click on this, come up to opacity, change this to linear, Dodge add, and we're back where we started. But actually, let's go ahead and click off the stopwatch because we don't want it to change. And let's go ahead and bring this down. Now, I know that appears as if 
they're almost not there. But now if we go ahead and scroll through the footage, you can see how those lens flares start to show up. So there you go, guys. If you don't want to spend any money and you want to do a little bit of the work, go ahead and take those lens flares, bring them over into Blender, do what you need to over there, come over into your editor. In this case, like I said, it's Premiere Pro, and go ahead and composite them on top. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out my channel. It's the Post Color Blog. Go ahead and subscribe. I have some more post production tutorials over there. There's a lot of stuff with color grading and speed grade and DaVinci Resolve. This footage, by the way, is from Video Blocks. But again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.